but that's what I'm that's why I'm 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 listening to specific live streamers. So please if you know that I'm a follower of your live stream, that's not meant to be disre disrespectful to you. Okay. Um I think what I just said was rather balanced. I, I didn't make anyone sound or in imply that any of them were failed traders. I didn't say that at all. I'm just saying for my personal study and an observation and a laboratory experiment, when I teach my sons how to do this, I'm telling them that look, listen to what they're saying right now. Do you see that? And you see how what I'm showing you is opposed to that. Just sit back and watch what happens. Now, I ain't going to lie. They're laughing and saying, you know, how can they not see this? Well, because they, they're not aware that what we're having this discussion about. They're not privy to it. But I'm privy to their expectation and their bias because they're making it public, right? So I'm capitalizing on that. Much like all the meme stock traders that were in Reddit saying they were going to beat the hedge fund managers. <laughs> no, you weren't. And you can see their stocks have been smashed. They didn't do what they said they were going to do. Okay, so they used that sentiment reading in Reddit's chat rooms or whatever it is they use. I don't know if they've never been on Reddit before, but I told you all on Twitter, I said, don't, don't touch these stocks because now they have the bait. Everybody thinks they're going to be able to muscle it up. There's a lot of people that are buying it, but why didn't it go to the moon? Because it doesn't work that way, folks. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. I, I, I know it's frustrating because if you're new and you think oh it's going to go up to the moon no no it's not especially when everybody thinks it's going to go up there it's not uh in passing real quick i'll, I'll just mention this um i saw a tweet some guy sent me a, a spongebob meme something how you said um bitcoin to ten thousand. um i'm not a crypto trader but i believe once they were at all the central bank digital currencies that all of your crypto is going to go to shit. And I'm okay with being wrong. I don't have a, I don't have a horse in the race. I don't care. I don't care about that, okay? But I wouldn't be buying it, and I wouldn't be looking for it to go to 20000 I wouldn't be looking for it to do anything. It's going to probably be very frustrating. It could stay chopping in here between 22000 and whatever the low of the you know, most recent low was. It could just bang around in there for a long time. It makes no sense to me. I don't like the asset class and there's better real markets to trade with precision so i'm not worried or influenced by anybody that is a fanatic with crypto anytime this thing goes up a little bit you all think it's going to saturn okay fuck the moon you're, you're it's going out of the solar system and it's just it's unfortunate because that has hurt more people than i think in any asset class in the last 20 years like that that mindset of it can only do that when that's not true Markets can stay in a choppy, shitty ass trading range for a long time. And you're the whole time expecting it to go to the moon and, and drive you nuts. Fuck that. If I'm going to be in here in these markets, I'm going in there where I'm going to make money, find my setup, get in there, get it and run. And I'm going to live my life. Not obsessively looking at my phone, worrying about who's going to say something bad about crypto or Bitcoin. Oh, no. FUD. Or I mean, fuck that. Too. I think it's. I think it's good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about it. Okay, I just know that that segment of Twitter and the trading community are just wild. Like they're just really, really wild. And I wish I could get that same fevered pitch into futures. <laughs> could you imagine? It would be so amazing because you would have such a, a a rich sentiment reading because crypto sentiment is perpetual bull. I mean, there's a lot of smart folks out there know that, okay, yeah, it's probably not going to go up because it's going to do this and do that. But by far and large, crypto really is like, it's a circus. like it, And it's carnival. Like, it's absolutely insanity. And unfortunately, a lot of new money, a lot of new traders came into trading through that, expecting it to go to them and expecting it to do really well. And I mentioned, you know, you got to be careful. You know, it's going to go to shit. And look how many times we've had like the FTX stuff. And you know, my own son, he has his shit caught up in uh, the broker he can't get his money out of. Okay. Because he didn't listen to good old ICT, his daddy. So it's frustrating. And I know I'm going to be frustrated because some of you are going to do things that you're told not to do. You're going to do things that you were 
never told to do. And you're probably going to hurt yourself this year. And I want to remind you all, that's your fucking fault. That's your fault. You did that to yourself because there's nobody's ever going to say ICT caused me to lose money because I've always taught in a paper trading account or a demo and they're in a fucking court anywhere. They're going to say, oh, yeah, this demo trader, this demo trade, this concept in a demo trade caused you to lose money. You took the initiative to push a button. And I'm telling you, don't push a fucking button this year. Don't. Don't. Learn how to read price. Learn your own tendencies to be impulsive that's going to be a painful lesson for you what's impulsive mean gentlemen you're walking next to your girlfriend or your spouse significant other you're walking and all of a sudden out the corner of your eye miss everything miss thing dressed to the gills beautiful lovely What's your eye do? Look over. Now, you know at that moment, that moment right there, you better get your shit fixed real quick before your significant other catches you looking. But now, what do you do? You make sure the coast is clear, then you look back again. And then now you're undressing her. That's impulsive. That's the thing that you know you should not do. But you fucking did it, didn't you? And you might get away with it once in a while. You might get away with it at that instant. But if you live your life like that, your significant other is going to catch you doing that. And what do you think they're going to say? Now, if you're in a long-term committed relationship, they're going to let you, you know, nudge you with their elbow. What are you doing? You can't get that. But if you're in a young, new, fledgling relationship and you haven't really committed yourself to either party and it's something new and fresh, you're going to feel insecure if your significant other is looking at someone else like that and gawking. Because you're going to think, oh, they're looking somewhere else. The grass is greener on the other side. That's impulsive. How's that relate to trading? Well, ICT said that he thinks it's going to go up to 4,030. And I'm in front of the charts right now. And he, he's, he had mentioned that fair value gap. So that's pretty much like you know, him saying buy it right now. So you know, even though he hasn't said anything about really technically buying it, and he hasn't really said where the stop loss should be on this particular fair value gap yet, I've got you know pretty good feeling that you know, the grass is greener right now. If I just go in there and just do, you know, just do one contract, just buy one contract. And because of the 430, I won't say nothing. You know, and he'll probably think it's funny. He might like my post if I say, I know I didn't listen, boss, blah, blah, blah. And then I made that 430, you know, high five every week, every, every day, and it won't stop. No, that's impulsiveness. Okay. You do the things I tell you to do. You don't do the things I tell you not to do. Focus on the things I'm telling you to focus on and nothing else. If you just follow that going through the rest of this year, you will get the understanding that you need to do it independently. You'll know when to do something, when not to do something. You'll understand how to place a stop loss. You'll understand what it feels like to get in there doing it and desensitize yourself. That means remove all that fear and anxiety that you're feeling about doing it incorrectly. You're going to do it incorrectly, but that incorrectly done process doesn't always equate to failure. What causes failure? Repetitively going in, fixing what you think is an error. It's just a transaction that didn't pan out. And it took something away that wasn't a deposit in money, a loss, a loss of time. You, you, you're going to see we're going to be in moves, and this will be a hypothetical. This is where your stop would be. I'm not going to push the button. There won't be a, a hard stop there, but I'll be communicating where I think it should be. And the market will go down to that level. Okay. Well, if it's at a point at which would be break even, you got to think about what that felt like to be in that trade, have unrealized profits. You haven't, you haven't got out of the move, but you're seeing it. It would be four and a half handles, maybe eight handles, maybe 10 handles. And if you didn't take a partial, or if I don't indicate there was a partial to be taken, which isn't going to happen because if five handles, you're taking it. This whole time investment will feel like a waste if you've done nothing but get break even, which is the actual lesson in that. You need to take partials. If I'm teaching you your threshold should be aiming for five handles, doesn't it go without saying if you're watching something? If it goes to five handles, you should do what? Initially, 
square the position off right there at five handles. And just watch, does it go beyond five handles? And you're going to feel all this impulsive behavior start to well up inside you. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. If you're, tra if you're trading with a live account, following along in the commentaries, I'm going to do in live streaming. You're going to feel like, oh, no, I shouldn't have listened to ICT, that fucker. He told me to get out of five handles. Look, at it, it's like 30 handles. What did you learn there? Greed. And it's going to build in the building blocks of fear of missing out on that next big rip. Instead of just saying, I was looking for five. It gave me five. I moved to the sidelines. Now I'm going off to go spend time with my kids. Go watch a movie. I'm outside. I'm doing whatever I want to do. Take a drive in my car. I'm on vacation. I got this one in and nobody knew about it. It's done. I'm not condoning vacation trading, by the way. <laughs> uh, every time I do it, I, I hate it because it ends up coming hours and hours and hours in front of the charts. And then my wife says, you, know, you weren't supposed to bring that. You said you weren't going to. I know. I'm sorry. That's like that analogy. The wandering eye. These charts, I'm sorry, they're all beautiful. <laughs> and I live a monogamous life, but as a trader, my eye, it just lingers. Okay. And in the charts, I'm going to see a hottie. Okay. I, I don't I don't see numbers in, in candles anymore. I just see a brunette, a blonde, a redhead. No, I'm just saying, I'm just being funny right now. My life is, is the only one for me. <laughs> the, the wandering eye scenario. We'll get you hurt in trading. Okay, so I want to make sure that you all go in with the right expectation, the mindset, the focus. And by doing it this way, it's going to be boring in the beginning. But once you see, we can see these things panning out every single time. It's the same fucking shit. It becomes entertaining. It's almost like the book you've read multiple times. You know the, you know the plot, you know the character engagements, and you know how it's going to end. Now, that same book that you read over and over and over again, you give it to your kid or your dog gets a hold of it, chews it up, rips a couple pages out or spills coffee on it, and you can't read a certain paragraph. Do you lose resolution if you go through that book and can't read that one or two paragraphs? You lose a little bit, but you are familiar. You still know what is likely <clears throat> to occur. You've been there before. It's kind of like a hologram. Okay. Um, a hologram and how a hologram. Uh, I'm going into a scientific. Well, I'll just go there. A hologram is an image that's formed with a capacity that allows for some things taken from it, and you'll still you'll still see it. You might lose a little bit of resolution, but you can still see it. Versus only being able to see black and white binary only. That's not what this is, because you're going to be able to see more than just one setup which makes you much more effective as a trader. See, if you're following a logic, like most retail things are, you're looking for this one pattern. You're looking for this one setup and this indicator. When it's oversold, you're trying to buy it. When it's overbought, you're trying to sell short. If the moving averages are pointing down, you're trying to go short. When an overbought reading happens in your indicator, that really confirms that it's probably time to sell. By that logic, once that pans out, and say the market starts to drop a little bit and it leaves the overbought condition and you're between overbought and oversold, you're in that area where, hey, you know, you're between setups. That was one of the frustrating things I had when I was using retail stuff and you know, fumbling. Only when the market was going parabolically up, I felt that it was working because I only, only used a 50-day moving average on the daily chart for my bias. It was, if it was sloping up, I wanted to focus on being long. And then I used an hourly stochastic, slow stochastics. And I looked for type one bullish divergence, which is the classic lower low in price and a higher low in stochastics while it's oversold. Once the uh, K and D crossed on the stochastic, that line, once that occurred, then I would go in the next day and I would buy strength at the open. And that's how I was trading. That was, I mean, that was it. There was nothing to it more than that. Now, I was teaching people like I had figured out, you know, how to world, how to end world hunger. You know, this is the to fix everything. And some of my students back from the 90s on America Online are actually still in this community here. <laughs> Hi, Ray and uh, Steve Michael Garner. The uh, folks that have watched me 
evolve as a, as a educator and as a mentor, uh, know full well the difference between today and how it was when I was just discovering how money can be made. But I can tell you as a 50 year old looking back, those instances, I really didn't know anything. Like I didn't know anything. And I translated market success on just a whim. It just happened. Okay, it was coincidence that I happened to be long in a time when the market was going up. And I didn't understand it. It was going up because it was no way for it to do anything but that at the time. Everything was in a commercial bull market. It was just parabolic. Everything was just straight up. So anybody buying anything could have made money then. And that, to me, looking back, was very painful as a young man because I was wanting it so badly to be skilled when it was just happenstance. Whereas now, I can... I can talk to you in wisdom and know that that was not wisdom then. That was pure and absolute luck. Whereas now today, I have something that's measurable, it's transferable, and other people are doing it. You know, and they're making real money with it, not just market replay or paper trading or demo. They're they're really realizing profitable results, and they're they're handling that and spending it and doing whatever they want to do with it as they should. But as a retail trader, if you're focused on whatever it is that they're teaching with retail, once that trade scenario starts, they train you to do what? Well, if you didn't take the trade, let it go and wait for the next trade setup. Well, what if it means that you have to wait for that crossing of the moving averages and they got to be sloping down and then you got to wait for another overbought scenario to go short? That's a whole lot of wasted fucking time for me. Like I, I, I couldn't tolerate that. So one of the things that became a, a transition for me out of retail stuff is that even though if I was thinking that if the market was bearish, whatever market I was trading, and I was using a 50-day moving average to give me my bias, and then on the lower time frames, four hour and one hour, I would use a 10 and 20 moving average. Exponential moving average. And, and if they were both pointing down and you know stacking, in other words, they're separating and pointing down both directions. If the daily at a 50-day moving average, it was going down too. That to me was a very, very strong bearish bias. Then if I waited for an hourly overbought, that would get me in sync with a move that had already happened on a higher time frame where other traders that using that logic wouldn't even consider it. So what did I start doing without really knowing what I was doing? I was taking the fractal nature of price and breaking down a larger move into smaller moves that repeat the same way. So some of you are in here listening to me and you don't trade like I do. You have a lot of retail indicators and you have logic that are found in books and you still make money. God bless you. I'm not saying anything about you not being able to make money. I'm just saying the things I'm going to show you about price are going to help you ferret out the winners in your system right now. And you're going to understand why they're winning. And you're going to understand how your system is losing when it does and how you can reduce that effect and minimize it, which is, again, all I'm trying to do is help you. There's no sales pitch. Okay. I'm doing this because I love doing it. I, I love teaching. I love sharing this stuff with you. I love seeing you run with it and do well with it. And it motivates me. It keeps me going. It's my entire life. <laughs> okay. But if I can drop down into a, a bearish model like that, using any other retail logic, it started this whole mindset. Okay. If I am really thinking that this is the only time trades are occurring, when this retail trader model is saying it's a sell, what's going on when the indicator that I'm using for overbought and oversold, who's buying and selling when it's in between overbought and oversold? So I started mining that, going in there and studying price action in those periods. And then I discovered that between overbought and oversold, there was these little micro gaps fair value gaps that's where i got the whole term that's why i gave you the logic and taught you that okay in between the best entry and the exit 
of the best case scenario. Your mindset should be thinking, okay, the market's going to be reaching for something. And then the retail model was it once it gets oversold and diverges bullishly. That was my exit strategy. Once I became a trader that could sell short, which took a very long time because it didn't make any sense for me to be able to sell something I don't have. Short selling was weird to me. But my, my counter uh, trade or the way I would kill a trade is if I'm short, I would use a divergence that would be bearish. And then I would look for a price to go lower the next trading day at the opening. I would look for a price below the opening price. And then boom, once it traded down to that price, the weakness of going below the opening price would get me in. And then I would do two times whatever the highest high from the, the entry point, whatever that amount of movement would be. That's where my stop loss would be. That's how I did it when I was trading with uh, the job, when I was going around filling vending machines, driving all around Baltimore, in and out of places all the time, using a quote track machine, a little, looks like a transistor radio duct tape to my work truck windshield. <laughs> Chart books laying piled up next to me in my lunchbox. I was a crazy ass looking freak. Like, I mean, I'm running around. I got charts rolled up in my back pocket and I'm, I got co track next to me while I'm filling candy machines up. Okay. I'm putting candy bars. You know, when you go to the hospital, put your dog on there. Like, you can't get a candy bar for a dollar now. But back when I was doing it, it was 45 cents a candy bar, 50 cents a candy bar, 50 cents for a can of soda. So I'm filling this vending machine and I got my co track laying in the the empty column that I haven't put Twix in or Hershey bars in or potato chips in. Okay. So I'm watching price and I'm looking at, I said, okay, all right. It should be filling me right now. On well, my stop order, I should be, I should be short right now on soybeans. So you don't have to be in here watching real time data. You don't have to be day trading. If you're going to learn how to do this and you know that you can't be an intraday trader and you need to trade on higher time frame trade, uh, trading ideas, I'm going to teach you how to do that this year too. But back to the, the the development of fair value gaps. When I was looking at the range between a price run that would be bearish between the actual entry that would be ideal, I may or may not been able to participate in that move. And that was a very great deal of, of stress and anxiety and frustration for me because if I missed something, if I didn't have the the prowess to observe it before it formed and then it started breaking down, I would feel like I'm going to miss that move. Once it starts moving, and you probably feel this is the same way when you see me talk about a move or I've highlighted certain things, or maybe you just found it on your own and there's nothing wrong with that. It's great. The market starts to move. You know where it's likely to go. You know what it's reaching for. There's an equal high. There's a single high up there, or it's going to a fair value gap that's above the marketplace. You know, in your heart of hearts, in your gut, you know exactly that son of a bitch is going right up there, but it's already started moving. So what do you do? Plunge in there with a demo. Buy it right there. Or sell it if you think it's going down. But then what happens is, is you're now, in your mind, you're saying, I don't care if it comes down against me because it's a demo. It can't hurt me. But if it goes up there, Fuck yeah, I was right. Look at that. Woo, video game trading. What are you teaching yourself? Don't worry about the loss because it can't hurt you because you're in a demo. But feel good about the transaction if it goes up there because you're right. Now stop and think about that for a second, folks. You're doing everything wrong. You're teaching yourself not to respect the risk. That's the paramount issue when you go into trading. You have to have a stop. You have to know why you're putting a stop there and how much are you risking. Some of you are just doing simple average 50 contracts or 50 lots on your trades on trading gold. You're not trading no 50 contracts of gold. And you're not adding every time it goes up two points. 